Hey y'all, Brian from Highgraph here, and I want to talk to you today about a very important topic, and that is getting multiple third-party API data pieces into your CMS so that you've got one API to work with and your editors have full access to all of that from within their headless CMS. All right, so today we're gonna to take a look at a high graph project. We're gonna start with a blank project and we're going to bring in multiple API sources as what we call remote sources and remote source fields inside of high graph. We're going to have one project, one API that then pulls from separate APIs and allows our editors and our developers to work with that data in really important and meaningful ways. Let's dive into it. So you can see here that we have a, a very simple blank project that I just created with High Graph. Uh, really any project is gonna work with this, but you can see this is so fresh that we still even had the getting started checklist here at the bottom right. So to start with, we need some form of API to work with. And we're working on a series of uh, fake APIs called Federate This that we'll actually use today. You can see we have products, we have reviews, we even have dev.2 articles. We're going to use these REST APIs to actually bring that data into our project. So I wanna start with getting our products in. Our products are what we're gonna have maybe be on an e-commerce site or something along those lines. So you can see here we have an API route. We have what's called an SDL, which is what we're gonna to use to convert this REST field into a GraphQL API. Uh, but to do all this, first we need to create a, our remote source inside of HiGraph. To do that, we're gonna to go to the schema area of our project. You can see here again, it's a blank project. And we're going to add a new remote source. We're gonna give this a name. We're just gonna call this our um, third party APIs. And we're gonna say this is a REST API and we need a base URL. In this case, we're gonna grab the, um, the route from our, uh, from our project here and federate this. So it's going to be the federate this Astro and Vercel and it's gonna have a route of API. That's the base that all of our API routes end up calling off of. So products are there, reviews are, are there, dev two articles and also YouTube videos if we get into that. So we're gonna put that in here and then we need to define out the custom types we want to have in this specific uh, remote source. So we're gonna start by just grabbing the uh, products. So we have a product type and we have a products array uh, that we will get here. So let's bring this in. We're gonna add a custom type definition of our product and our products. And let's go ahead and have a type of product meta as well. And that's going to have a data field that will just bring a singular product in. All right, so we have custom type definitions of product, products, and product meta. And then we don't need a custom input type definition at this time. I'm just gonna click add on this and it's gonna automatically pull this in and let us get started working on fields. All right, so now, now that that's saved in, we're actually going to first start by adding a query to our main project. This is going to allow for us to have what we call top level remote sources. So this is going to add our products list as data just directly in our API for uh, the GraphQL point here in High Graph. We're going to add a remote source field, a REST API field, and we will just call this one products. And then down here, we can set a description if we want to, but the main thing we need to do is we're gonna have a get method. We're going to return our product meta and then we need to give a path in our API that this can, uh, this can query against. In this case, we need the products endpoint. And let's confirm that the all is what we want here. So API slash products, that's going to return all of the products in this API. So we have products and we need a slash at the beginning there. And now we can add this field in. Once this adds in, we'll actually be able to be ready to query this from our generic high graph API. So we'll move over to the API playground, get rid of the starter query that we have in here. And now we have this products area right here. I can select products, get the data and grab whatever data that was available in that SDL that I wrote. In this case, I want the name and maybe the price and let's grab the ID, sure. We play that and we can see there are three products in that API. They have a name, they have a price, and they have an ID. So all these are now available to me in my GraphQL API, even though this was a REST API uh, originally. 
So we can do this top level, this gives us what we need, but what if we wanted to bring in specific product information onto a product model that we have? We don't have that yet, so let's go create a new model in our schema. In this case, we will call it the uh, product page model. This will be where a product could have a specific page around it. Let's go ahead and add that in. And then we'll be able to add various sorts of fields. All the fields that are available in high graph, we can add to this. So let's give it a title field so that we have a title and we'll use that as the title field. We'll give it its own proper slug. We'll give it its own proper slug field. We'll just call that this one slug and that'll be for what we use when we're building our site later on. And then let's just add a rich text field so we can call it like the body of this. We don't need price. We don't need anything else that would have been inside of our API before. We just need the things that we want to uh, add to the data that we allow our editors to play with here. And then finally, we need a way of associating the data in this model with the data that's in our API. So I'm gonna add a single line text again. And this time I'm gonna call this the uh, API ID. We'll add that as well. And now we're ready to add our remote source field to this model. So we can actually grab that data. So I'm gonna get a rest field, just like we did on the query level, on that top level. And I'm gonna say, this is our product data. And again, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did before. We're gonna have our return type be that product meta. And then this time, we'll use that same product route and we'll confirm in our, um, in our Federate This API, we've got API product and then an ID, which is what we're going to use to associate here. So in this case, instead of actually putting like a numeric value here, we can actually grab off of our doc, that doc.api ID here. So I can add that in. That's successfully in there. Now let's take a look at adding some content to one of our products. So we come to the product page entries. We'll add a new one. We'll call this one product one with extra data. And let's just give it a slug of product one for the moment. Uh, we could add any sort of rich text we want in here. And then we can give it a product API ID. In this case, I know that product one has an API ID of one in here. So let me go ahead and publish this and save it. And we'll go take a look at this in the API playground as well. So now instead of products, which gets us the top level remote field, we're going to grab the product pages. Let's grab all of them. So it's a little bit easier to get through. Let's grab the API ID. We'll get the HTML from the body. Uh, we will grab, let's see, the slug and the title. And then we also want to get the product data off of this. And you'll see this is very familiar to that top level field as well. And we will grab from here, the price, the rating, the number of reviews, uh, maybe a description in there, count in stock, sure, if we need that. And let's play this and see what we get. So here we have the API ID, the body, the slug, the title, all coming from high graphs data. And then the product data, this all comes from the API and is associated by that ID field, that API ID field. So we have all of this, but what if we also want to get our reviews for these products and also bring those in here? We can do that. And as it turns out, the Federate This API collection has fake reviews as well. It has all the reviews to in total, but it also has reviews by product ID. So that sounds like something that we might want. So let's grab this SDL and we're gonna add this on to our remote source schema. So let's go to our remote sources, that third party API, and let's add a new custom type definition. We've got the review and we've got uh, the reviews, plural. And then let's go ahead and add in our uh, type review meta as well. So type review meta, and then this is going to have a data property that will be a singular review, just like we did before for our products as well. Let's save that in. And now we'll be able to actually add this onto our model level as well by going in and adding a new remote source field to the product page as well. So let's scroll down, let's get another rest field and we'll call this one product reviews. 
we will change the return type to the review meta. And then let's add another path as well again here. And let's see what it looks like over in, let's see what it looks like over here. So we've got API reviews product product ID. So we already have the API as the first part of that. It's built into our remote source. So we just need the rest. So federate this API reviews product product ID. So in this case, instead of the product ID, we want to grab that from our document on that API ID. Let's take a look at this real fast and see if it is what we want it to be. Let's grab product one. You can see here we have one, two, three reviews coming in in the API. So we can update, we can save this in, and this will allow for the, uh, the product details and the reviews for that product to all pull from the singular API ID here, and it's gonna populate that data into our API. So here we have the, uh, the same query we, we made before. You can see here we have the product pages. Each product page has the API ID, a body, slug. We also have the product data pulling in from our third-party API. And this time, we're going to add in the product reviews as well, all stemming from the API ID. This time, we want the comment. We want the name. And we want the rating all to come in so we can maybe make a star system on our e-commerce site. We play that again, here's all that same data, again for the product one, and then here are those three API pieces from within the, uh, the external API there. So it's ready to go. We can make a whole e-commerce site based on this and pull all this data together from multiple APIs. You might be thinking this is not always the greatest user experience, right? Having to choose a specific API ID uh, that feels a little bit on the lame side, right? Uh, you can actually create and use apps to handle this sort of remote source thing as well to allow for you to create a picker that will work best for, uh, for your editors. So in this case, I actually already have one and I'm going and we're going to have this in the, in the marketplace. I'll put a link down below to the, uh, to the marketplace for this. Uh, but I have a data picker for remote fields app. So I'm gonna install this app into the project that we're working on, and then we're going to allow for that to be used here. So let's find this in here. We need our example project that we are working on. Here's that. We'll put it on the main environment and we'll install that in. There are no configuration options that are needed here, um, but we do need to authorize it to be able to read and do a little bit of, of write work on this as well. Uh, you can see there's just an install button that we get after we add that in. And once that's installed, we can now go add some fields onto our schema. So instead of selecting um, a string, we're gonna select a specific field that we were given by this app. You can see we have a GraphQL data picker now and a REST data picker as well. This all depends on having a top level remote source. Uh, so we have one for all products, which is going to help us find the product IDs and allow for a select menu to be added in. This is what we're gonna use. We need to get this API ID in for our app. So when we add a new GraphQL or REST data picker element, we need to provide it a few different things. First, we're gonna give it a display name. This will be our API ID picker. We'll need to change some things out in the end. Um, actually, yep. So I need to give it a data array key. This is the key where our data lives. So in this case, the, the API has a data key for this. The ID field on the data that we get back, in this case is the ID. The API for our remote source ID, which is products, that's gonna build the query for us. And then if there's a specific title field we want to display in our, uh, in our picker, we need that here. In this case, I believe it's named name for the product name. I can add this field in. And then when I go to our content, I'll be able to, instead of typing this in, I can now select from those three products or however many products are listed to change this out. So let me go ahead and save this. And then we will convert over our remote source field to use this new picker uh, instead of using the old API ID. So we'll go back into our schema. We'll go to the product data here. 
And instead of this doc API, we want doc API ID picker. And we'll do the same thing for our reviews remote source. So let's edit this one as well. So we want the doc API ID picker. And then once these are both changed out, we'll actually be able to delete the API ID and use this picker field. And again, give a better user experience for our editors as well. So we'll delete this field, delete that. And then when we go back to our API playground, all of this should function exactly the same way as before. We've actually completely removed out some of the data that we had, but because we replaced it in a meaningful way, we can get that. So our product page, uh, actually we want product pages so we can see see it more easily. And we will grab the API ID picker. We will grab the product data and we'll just get the, uh, let's just get the name for now off of this. And then we will also get the product reviews, get that data, comment and name. And then let's get the title, sure. And let's play this. And here we have, we've changed it to product three. So we've obviously changed the data underneath. And then we also have all the reviews for product three not product one. And then we can go ahead and change that just to see how easy that will be for our editors. Go back in, select product one again, because we want it to be product one. And then we will view the API playground again, preview this query, and now we have product one for our data and all the reviews for that. But you might have also noticed that you have these product data fields that just say preview and playground. Our editors don't need to see this. So let's actually adjust these two rest fields to have them not be visible for our editors. They don't need to know that that's there necessarily. So we'll come into our product data and our product reviews. And instead of uh, having this be visible, we can actually move the field visibility to be API only. So this will only show up in the API now. And we can also, if we needed to like have this be a, a smaller cache or a longer cache, we could set that here as well. So let me update that here and we'll update that in the reviews as well. So let's add in advanced API only. And now when we go back to our content, we don't have any of that anymore. It is now a much more streamlined editing process that you don't need to see all that stuff. Now, if you want to take a look at this project, let's do one more thing. I wanna open this so that you can take a look at all of the data that's flowing in here and take a look at it yourself and actually clone this and be able to play with it. So I'm gonna to go to my project settings. I'm gonna go down here and you can see we've got this clone project. I can clone the project, but I want you to be able to do it as well. So I'm gonna turn on sharing and I will say you can share with the content because I've made that one piece of content and I will put this uh, this link here, which is a little hard to read, don't worry about it, down in the description field as well so that you can take a look at this as well. And with that, we have a working project that could use really any API that you have. REST API, GraphQL API, they're all ready to go and you can take a look at this right now with the link down below in the description. The APIs all work out so you don't actually have to go and add these APIs in. The remote sources will all be waiting for you there. You can create as many different types of fields as you want and just play around with it. Put it in Next, put it in Nuxt, put it in, in Eleventy, wherever you want this to be, all the data is gonna be right at your fingertips and it's gonna be right at the fingertips of your editors as well. So if you have any questions on this, be sure to join our community at slack.highgraph.com. Ask any questions that you have or let me know if you tried it out, if you hit any stumbling blocks or if you need any help in that way. Until next time, I hope you do amazing things with Highgraph and I'll see you on the internet.